Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week we're in Seaside, Oregon for Wheels and Waves. This event brings some of the finest cars in the Pacific Northwest to the downtown streets of this quaint little resort town on the Oregon coast. Great cars in a gorgeous setting, it's a beautiful thing. Joining me now is Gary DeBolt, Hi, the Dennis. organizer of this event, right? Right. Organizer of Wheels and Waves. This is a great show and what a Thank great you. place, Gary. It's the best place on the Oregon coast, basically. It's awful nice. For the show though, right downtown, how did you pull that one off? But years ago, the, we went to the City Fathers and asked them if we could block off the streets in downtown and start this event. They, they told us we've got to have 90% of, 95%, I'm sorry, of the merchants agreed to let us block the streets. We hustled, worked, and everything else, got 95% of them to agree. And by the end of the weekend, we had 100% of the people agreeing to let us do car events in downtown Seaside. It just grown and, and, and got better every year basically since then. But the town really does seem to embrace it. So how long has this show been going on? It's gone through a few different iterations, hasn't it? The, the event originally started eight years ago and evolved and changed. It, it is whole family and there's a lot of stuff for kids here. So the people are not just coming to a car show. They're coming for vacation. They're coming for vacation. So how many cars are you packing onto the streets here? This year we've ended up with a final number of 374 cars. It's a mix of uh, rods and customs, all pre-1962. They're probably some of the better cars out of the Northwest. Well, it's, it sounds like a, uh, you know, a, a great weekend. Who, who could pass this up? I, I want to I check some of these cars out, maybe even check the coast out before well, I get to Enjoy get the to work. town. Let's enjoy go, let's, let's let's go take do a walk. It. All right. Welcome back to My Classic Car. So Jim, a 54 Bel Air convertible, very rare car. You know it is very rare. Uh, what I've heard, they, they built 800 of them in 1953 and 54 total. Combined, huh? Combined. You kept it pretty stock looking, at least at first glance. It's a, it's, and it's an interesting color. Is that a correct color? That is a correct color. You know, I, apparently it only came on 54 Shiv convertibles. It's a turquoise. It's a light turquoise. Yeah, it's a, it's a very pale, and that's probably why uh, I've never seen it because I don't think I've ever seen a 54 convertible. They're that rare. <laughs> they are very rare. But you got a stock interior. Stock interior. Just uh, only thing I've added is, well, it looks like a four-speed. But does uh, look like a four. That does look like a four-speed, <laughs> even though I saw it said Power Glide on the back. <laughs> yeah, that's a fool, people. <laughs> it's got a uh, Super T10 four-speed, four nine-inch, 389 posi. Well, see, oh, so you tweaked on it a bit, haven't you? Well, a little bit. So yeah. it probably doesn't have the 232 six-cylinder engine in it anymore either, right? Well, I mean, let's take some, a look. You put some crate engine, you put a, you put a, put a, put a 502 in it, or you, you put a 350 Chev. What'd you put? What'd you put? A 409? A 409. <laughs> now, now, that's another thing you don't see every day. It's definitely cozy. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. That's all we want. So, you know, how long have you been working on the car? Well, you know, uh, we've been working on it like four years. So, uh, Wow, well, you, you, you made a beautiful ride out of it. Now, where are you from? We're from Longview, Washington. Okay, and, and how many times have you been to the uh, Wheels and Waves here at Seaside? Well, you know, this is our, this is our fifth year. Uh, this is the first year for this one, though. Pretty cool show? Oh, man, I love this show. <laughs> this is the best show. It is absolutely one of the best shows. Well, and you got one of the best cars in it, Jim. Well, I appreciate it, Dennis. Thanks for bringing All it up, right, buddy. You bet. She's a beauty. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, Bill, there's a lot of stuff at this show that I've never seen before, but I have definitely never seen one of these. This is a 55 Dodge what? Pony Express van. What was it made for? It was built by Dodge for the U.S. Postal Service under a contract that uh, was for 1500 but the contract was never completed because Congress didn't totally fund the contract. Gee, what are the odds of that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? What are the odds? So how many did they build? 400 of the 15. And then they shut down the plant and started making Plymouth Valiants. Wow, what a bizarre little vehicle though. So, so what's it powered by? It's got the old Flathead 6, uh, 212 cubic inch Plymouth engine. Uh -huh. It's such a bizarre design though. I mean, it's a very short wheelbase. Very short. And extremely tall. Mm -hmm. So you can stand up and drive. And, and that's what you do. You actually do stand up and drive this thing, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It's far easier to drive it from a standing position than from sitting. How, how does it drive? It looks top heavy. It looks downright unstable. 
Well, top speed on it, for all practical purposes, is only about 45 miles an hour. <laughs> And anything above that, yeah, I'm afraid it would be unstable. So, I mean, if it's so rare, when you go to restore something like this, what do you do? Where do you find the parts? Well, we've had to make a lot of them. The body itself, uh, I don't think you could get parts. Uh, fortunately, this one was totally intact. Uh, what it was lacking was drivetrain, and we took that out of another truck. Yes, everybody, every, everybody gathers around this. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, great vehicle, man. It's uh, good talking to you, Dennis. The only one I've ever seen. <laughs> Pony Express. <laughs> well, the next one you see will still be us. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. Probably so. Welcome back to my classic car. Okay, Dave. This is one of the wilder customs here. It's a it's a '62 T-Bird. Right? Correct. Yep. But this looks like a Starliner roof. That it is. 61, 61 Starliner top. So it's a Starbird or a Thunderliner? Yeah, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> well, I mean, and grafting another top on, that's a big deal. Well, when we did the top, the windshield is stock Thunderbird. Okay. And we laid it back three and a half inches. Okay. And then we cut four inches off the Starliner top in the front edge. All right. We kept the back wide narrowed the front oh, end, I see. and then we went back to the deck. Oh yeah, oh and yeah. And we cut straight across the deck. We took six inches out of the trunk, pulled the deck back, and then reformed the sheet metal in here. I, you know, I hadn't noticed it, but it does do this, yeah, it doesn't does it? does go in. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> that is and so cool, man. We did a few other little deals, like the skirts, for example. We filled in the bottom of the skirts to make it look lower. Yeah, yeah. And then around the back, we put 59 Buick tail lights just in the centers and then Frenched in the license plate. But of course, yes, of course. And then up in the front, we made the grill out of 112 valve stem covers that go on your tires. <laughs> well, you know, the, the interior too, I mean, you've, you've kept it pretty much stock T-Bird, but then you've got it uh, pretty, you got it fluffed up there. Yeah, basically the interior, the configuration of the interior is stock. No, you've uh, you still got the, the flyaway steering wheel. But that's you know. for us full figure guys, so we yeah. can get in and out, so we just kind <laughs> of But you've changed the button. That, yeah, that's just a spinner on the top. How cool. On the top of the button. We kind of, the theme of the car, even from the tail lights all the way through to the grill, kind of is pointed and kind of to the shape of the car. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty trick looking custom, but do you actually drive it? Yes, we do. We drive it as often as we can. I have to admit, sometimes we trailer it depending yeah. on where we're going, but we do drive it as much as we can. And it's just, it's fun like any Thunderbird would be. Yeah, it is. It's, it like still drive. has the same ride of a Thunderbird. and It's like driving the living room. Yes. So. so so the Thunderliner. That's I like it. the Thunderliner. Thunder that's, pretty cool. that's pretty cool. Starbird. Yeah, we didn't, we Starbird, didn't want to go with Starbird because it's kinda yeah, you know, yeah. we're Th taking somebody else's. Thunderliner. So. I think you got it. Hey, great car, Dave. Thank you. It's it's trick. Thank you. Well, John, a um, a, a forty Packer Darren, I bet this is the only one here. Yes, yes it, it is. is. <laughs> yes. They only made a handful of these. Right, they made about twenty of them. Total the 180. Now that, this was a, I mean, this was an elegant car in its time. Uh, fairly pricey too in 1940. Yes, no. How much did it cost? Yes, it cost about 4,700 dollars in 1940. So that was that was up there. Right. Beautiful car. Now you, uh, where'd you find this? In Berkeley, California. Oh wow. Did uh, now did you just stumble on it, or you were you were looking for this? No, car? I was looking for it. Now you've done obviously you've done a fair amount of work on it. You've uh, you know you didn't restore it to stock. You restored no. it to kind of how John wanted it, right? Right. So the interior is very luxurious, and it looks almost, it looks Jaguar, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's it is? a 96 Jaguar interior. And then all the dash and everything is more custom built uh -huh. to fit the car. And of course, you know, it has the Darren dip here. That's That was sort of his trademark, right? Right, that was Darren dip, they call it. Beautiful back end. What kind of shape was it in? It wasn't, uh, none of the parts fit. So you had to do a little bit of tweaking on that. Right, a lot of. A lot, uh, more, yeah, than a lot a, of more than a little. Right. But of course, the inter interesting about this car, and we've sort of left it to the end here, but you put, you know, kind of an interesting engine in it. It's not the Packard straight eight anymore, is it? No. Sir. No, it's, no, it's, it's not. Yeah. In fact, I don't know if you could have gone more extreme than this. You went with a Viper engine? Right. What possessed you to do that? Oh, I just decided that I wanted. A, I had a different car to begin with, so I might as well put a Viper in it. <laughs> and you got you got twenties on it all around. Twenty-inch wire wheels, yeah. And it actually looks like you drive it. Yes, I drive it all over the place. You're a nut. Yeah, they <laughs> call me that up many a time. <laughs> I mean, is it is it like killer to drive? It's very. It's a lot of fun to yeah. drive. Yeah. Really strong. 
Real strong. Yeah, real yeah, real strong. strong, real strong. Well, like I say, I mean, not only do you have the only 40 Packard Darren here, but it's definitely the only fact 40 Packer Darren with a Viper engine in it. Definitely. 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 It's probably the only uh, Packard Darren that's on the road. <laughs> Great looking car. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you very much. Taxi, taxi, <laughs> Patrick, what? this is so cool. It's a 35 Plymouth? 1935 Plymouth. Man, now, was this always a taxi or just you just did it? Well, we decided to make a taxi out of it just to be a little bit different. Originally, was it originally, it was just an old rusty car sitting in a field. It's, a, it's one of those field finds? A field find, yeah. Man, 35 Plymouth, do you still have the original engine in it? Oh, I've got a late model, or later model, Slant 6 in 1976. So do you do you drive it a lot? Oh yeah, we it's never been on a trailer. So we've been to Yellowstone, San Francisco, Paso Robles. Do people love Reno. it? Reno. Oh yeah, we have people yelling "Hey taxi" from <laughs> one end to the other. Well, the it's, it's so cool, and you know, you you did a real kind of a period interior on it too. Is that black leather? Yeah, it's all black leather. I'm a auto upholsterer by trade, so I thought that would be appropriate. Yellow headliner. That yeah, adds a that lot of light to it. it up it a little does. bit in there, you know. What else would a taxi have? Yeah, and you've uh, even got a meter in it. Yeah, the meter we don't use, but uh, it looks it good. looks good. It looks you know, good. at these prices. Yeah, you couldn't do very well, could you? At uh, the gas you price, you no. need to raise your price. But the trailers is what really got me. This is so cool. Is this an original? That's an original 1937 Mullins trailer. So is it all steel? It's all steel. Even the top is all one piece of steel. I didn't think they could stamp something that big. The back Mullins then. Company developed presses to stamp this, and that's why most of the autos earlier yeah, I mean, than 1936 had a canvas top. Yeah, canvas top. You even had a soft top there, but they were able to stamp something this big. That big, you know. So it's 25 for, cents a mile for luggage, too. Yeah, so, well, you know, you know, I'm adding, it I'm adding yeah, a few yeah. of these up to make sure I can make at least a dollar. Well, well you having a good time at the show? Have you oh, been here yeah, before? I love it. We love it. We come down here every year. Even if the weather's not what you'd really want, it's a great show. Well, it's still a great place. Oh, yeah, you know. Like they say, you know, a bad day at the beach is better than a good day at work. <laughs> Any day. Any well, like, day. like the uh, license plate frame says, hey, taxi. Hey, taxi. Thanks, Patrick. Okay, thank you. Great ride. <laughs> oh, man. Seaside is a nice little town, and Wheels and Waves is really a great event. I know it's clear out on the Oregon coast, but hey, make it part of a family vacation. I guarantee everybody will have a good time. <laughs>